Programmet presenteras av Betsy.com. This is Marcus Kova with Studio MMA and MMA Net, and we're here in Atlanta for UFC 145, and we're here with John Alessio, and I'm going to ask you a question I'm sure you've been asked before. How are you feeling? Uh, I feel real good. I uh, just feel real blessed to be back in the UFC. It's been a long road back. And uh, you've come down from 170 to 155, and uh, you were in a small 70. How, how is the cut coming down to 55? Well, the cut's pretty good, you know, I mean, as long as I stay, you know, very disciplined and, and dedicated to the diet, um, you know, I, I make it just as easy as I was, or just as difficult as I was making 70 in the past. Um, I became a much smaller fighter, um, you know, as, you know, training got a little more scientific with my strength and conditioning. It wasn't so much like meat and potatoes, bench press type stuff, <laughs> you know, it was, uh, you know, getting better with my diet and, and uh, I just started getting smaller and it was something I was thinking about for the last like couple of years, really. Now, you, you didn't get the full training camp like most fighters do because you're a replacement for Mike Wiseman, who was supposed to fight Bocek, who you're fighting. Mm -hmm. uh, how many weeks in or out did you did you get the fight? Uh, 18 days is when I got the phone call. Um, so, you know, of course, you got to think part of that is fight week, so you want to taper down and stuff. So basically got a good two hard weeks training in. But <laughs> I fought March 16th and had two weeks of rest, you know, some bumps and bruises and uh, – so once I got back into the gym, the first two days were hard, and after that, everything just seemed to come right back. And we see it sometimes, guys, that don't get hurt too bad in fights, and, and they're able to come right back in. Uh, but how is it for you? Is this the first time where you fight with such short break between the fights, or have you done it before? Uh, I've done it a lot. Um, I've taken short notice fights before. I've fought, you know, back-to-back -back weekends. And, really? Uh, yeah, uh, so it, it's really nothing new to me, and I'm a warrior and a fighter. You can call me tomorrow, and I would still show up for this Saturday. <laughs> would you make the weight, though? We might have to do 170. <laughs> <laughs> now, you live in Vegas. You're originally from Canada. You find another Canadian. How, how close is the bond? I know Canada is a big country, but have you guys trained before? Do you know each other? No, I actually don't know Bocek. I mean, obviously, I know of him. I've seen him fight a lot, um, you know. He's a great grappler, but no, I don't personally know him at all. But it, of course, you know, there's Canadian camaraderie that's going to have to go out the window for 15 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> and uh, you're, you're fighting a guy that uh, uh, has fought Magdanzig before. And both of you share your striking coach, who we did an interview with as well, in um, Gil Martinez. Mm -hmm. Now, he had nothing but good words to say about you. What is it about Vegas and, and the training over there? How come you made the move down there? Uh, the training partners and the trainers, my manager lives there. It was just a combination of everything. Um, you, you know, it's the mecca of mixed martial arts really in the U S there's, you know, tons of training partners. And, uh, of course the coaching there has been amazing and, you know, and I love it. So, uh, going down to, to Vegas, it wasn't difficult to find training partners that can mimic Bocek styles. No, I, I train with Robert Drysdale jujitsu. So many good jujitsu practitioners in there. Um, so, and I've been training hard with him for the last couple of years. And so, you know, jujitsu is my first love anyways. So, you know, I'm no stranger to the ground. And we see a lot of Canadian fighters in the, um, in the UFC and in mixed martial arts in general. And uh, it's, an, it's not a big country. It's a big country, but it's not a big population. Right. How come mixed martial arts is so huge in, in, in Canada? Well, Canadians have always been big fight fans. I mean, check out hockey. <laughs> you know, they're, they're, you're allowed to fight in hockey, and we love it. And um, Canadians have always been, you know, game for a good street fight. You know, not, you know, like in the U.S., it seems more like there's weapons on the street and stuff. Right, where in especially Canada, in Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, and in Canada, you know, you could just fist fight it out, and uh, usually you can end up being buddies afterwards. So just Canada's always been, you know, lovers of fighting and it's obviously going now with toronto toronto finally allowing mixed martial arts as well um how did you get started in the game i got started by renting ufc3 <laughs> <laughs> uh back in 1997 98 uh so yeah. when i first started training my first profile was in 98 um so yeah i just so what you had to profile the same year as you started training i did actually three months after training uh that's kind of how i got the nickname the natural uh, just because I caught on to stuff really fast and I, I didn't do any martial arts growing up as a kid no karate no wrestling uh, I did uh, baseball soccer and, and BMX riding and then as soon as I rented the tape I was in love with it and I just caught on really fast 
So you trained for three months and you had your first professional fight after three months. I presume you didn't have a manager at the time. Nope, there there wasn't really any managers back then <laughs> or, or sanctioned shows. It was it was, you know, just uh just a rinky dink show put on in back in my home area and uh yeah, I signed up and kicked some butt. You did? Yeah. You I won your first fight? Took him down, mounted him, and TKO'd him. Did you know that it was called a mount at least at the time? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I had, uh, you know, I'd watched all the Hoist Gracie tapes. I knew the positions, and, you know, I started training in a garage with all my with, with different friends. And a guy that I'd met named Jason Height, who's actually going to be coming down to support me, um, had a blue belt under Hoist Gracie. Right. Um, and I'd met him at a gas station. He had a Gracie sticker on his car, and I was more interested in where he got the sticker than <laughs> if he actually trained. And then I found out he trained, and I started working with him in his garage. And three months later, I was fighting. So, from where the sport's been to where it is today, you know, did you foresee this at all? Where you're going to be today? No. I mean, I've really seen the sport grow from the beginning to now, and been involved in it. Um, right. When I first started, there was no time limits. There was no rules. It wasn't even called mixed martial arts. It was NHB. It was no holes barred. And to see rounds implemented, commission, testing, um, you know, all these things, and, and still be relevant in the sport is pretty cool. And uh, fight pay, obviously, it's now it's a professional sport with professional athletes, and, and you, you get paid accordingly as well. Uh, with Saturday nights... Uh, pay-per-view event being one of the most hyped fight events this year um do you feel that you guys who work just as hard get put a little bit in the in the shadow because of the the big names um, i'm just happy to be back in the ufc i could be the very first preliminary bout of the night and i wouldn't even care i feel blessed to be able to kick off the pay-per-view like how yeah. cool is that on my return to to fight on the pay-per-view so it's very special, and uh, I think John Jones and Rashad Evans deserve all the credit right now. I mean, this is the light heavyweight championship fight. I'm pumped for this fight, just being, <laughs> a, just being a fan, you know. You're the first fight on the main card, as you mentioned, and there's a few fights in between. Will you get ready after the fight to go back out and watch the main event? Are you a fan of the sport still? Absolutely. I, I'm really pumped to watch the fight. I want to plan on kicking back with the beer and uh, seeing what happens. Do you have any predictions for the fight? Yeah, I, I've predicted a few times that I think Rashad's going to win this fight. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's been a few people that said that, but more people that with Jones. For sure. What, make, what makes you think so? Uh, I think he's got more power in his hands. I think he's faster athlete. You know, he's, got, he's right. quicker. Um, and I think their wrestling's going to be pretty even. I think Jones has more flashy, you know, moves. But he doesn't really seem to knock too many people out standing up. Right. You know, where Rashad could put you to sleep with one punch. And I think Rashad also has the wrestling to, to, I hate saying hold them down, but kind of hold them down to control the fight. What about your own fight? Any predictions for that one? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm going for the knockout, and that's what I want. I want that bonus. Um, I want to be victorious, and I want to finish him. So I presume you're going to be keeping the fight on the feet. Yep. Game plan A is keep it on the feet. If it goes to the ground, I'm going to punish him from there. Even if I'm on my back, I'm going to be elbowing him like crazy. And I want to put him into a real fight. And uh, come Saturday, you win the fight, you're out there kicking back. How soon would you be okay with a phone call, obviously saying there's no bruises and so on, another phone call from the UFC to fight again? Is there one next weekend? Because <laughs> if that's actually. the case, you could call me. But ideally, <laughs> where I really want to fight is UFC Calgary in July. That's my, I want to go back to my home country and fight in the UFC. That's That's a dream right there. So if I can do that... July 21st, Dana White, Joe Silva, put me on. <laughs> <laughs> we just came from Sweden where, obviously, UFC Sweden were there for the very first time. And uh, it was a sold-out sporting event in, in the Globe Arena. It was, it, was, it was insane to hear the Swedish fans when the Swedish fighters came out. Beat only by one event that we've been to, which was Mark Hominick coming out to I'm Coming Home in Toronto. Mm -hmm. um, Mark is here as well. He's fighting, obviously, on Saturday night, too. Are you guys cool? Are you friends? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, we, we both trained under Sean Tompkins for a while, and, you know, he was a late friend of ours. And 
yeah, Mark is cool, man. And I, yeah, he's, I wish him nothing but success and hope he pulls off a big victory and doesn't take my KO bonus. <laughs> <laughs> now, excluding Bocek, obviously, because you guys are fighting, but do you guys, do Canadian fi fighters stick together kind of in the, in the UFC? Yeah, there's definitely, you know, camaraderie there. And, you know, we're always rooting for each other. And uh, I'm sure it's the same with, you know, the American fighters, you know, they're rooting for each other. But yeah, you know, Canadians are pretty proud and you know, I'm hoping that every Canadian except for one can pull off a win tomorrow, uh, Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> we all know who that is. <laughs> so there's no hard but except from the fight on Saturday night, there's no beef. You guys are cool. Absolutely. I, I you know I'm sure Mark Bochak is a wonderful human being, you know, a good person. Um, but for 15 minutes, he's got to be my worst enemy. You heard it right here. Thank you very much, John Alessio. See you on Saturday night. Thank you very much, guys. <laughs> Oh my God. Programmet presenteras av betsafe.com.